Hi, I'm Christiane from Victory Patterns and welcome to this tutorial on how to sew shearing. Our new pattern, Sophia, uses shearing in both the bodice and some of the sleeve pieces. I'll be going deep into everything you need to know on how to sew shearing, so whether you're sewing Sophia or another project that uses shearing, this tutorial will help you to guide you through how to do it successfully. If you haven't seen Sophia yet and you want to check it out, I'll link the pattern in the description below. So let's get started. Shearing is a series of parallel rows sewn onto the fabric that produces a beautiful gathered effect on the fabric's surface. It uses elastic thread in the bobbin with regular thread on top. Straight stitches are sewn and the elastic thread on the wrong side of the fabric pulls the fabric into its gathered form. Not only is the effect beautiful, but it also creates a high percentage of stretch, making for a really comfortable garment. For sewing shearing, you're going to need regular thread to match your fabric, good quality elastic thread, relatively lightweight fabric, note that the heavier the fabric weight is, the less of a shearing effect you'll get, you're going to need your sewing machine, and you may also need a small screwdriver for adjusting your bobbin tension. Since shearing requires evenly spaced rows of stitches, there's a few options that you have to create guidelines for these stitches. So your first option is going to be using a clear drafting ruler and chalk to draw your guidelines. The second option is going to be using your presser foot, but you need to make sure that you're using a presser foot that allows for a half an inch spacing from your needle to the edge of the foot. If you don't have a foot with this spacing, I've created a tutorial on how to create your own guide foot using a regular presser foot. I'll link that blog post for that tutorial in the description below. And if you'd like to make your own guide foot, check that out. And once you have all your supplies, it's time to set up your machine. Before we get started on setting up the machine, I just wanted to mention that I'm going to be using a machine with an external bobbin case instead of a drop-in bobbin. You can use either kind of machine for sharing, but the external bobbin case allows for a more accessible bobbin tension control. I will link you below to a video that shows you how to adjust the tension on a drop-in bobbin case, but I would really recommend you looking at your particular machine's user manual because it might differ from the guidance in that video since each machine is a little bit different. So check out that video, but everything that I'm saying in regards to changing the tension will, all, will apply no matter what machine you use, just how you change the tension might be a little bit different. So with that being said, let's dive into the machine setup and we're gonna start by winding the bobbin. The bobbin is wound by hand with elastic thread. If we were to use the machine's bobbin winding method, it would create too much tension, which would affect the result of the shearing. When winding, you wanna have some slack. Don't pull the thread too tightly as you don't wanna engage the stretch. Give a really slight tension as you wind, enough so that the thread isn't falling off the bobbin. You'll need several bobbins of elastic for this project, so I'd suggest winding a few bobbins before you start as it will make your workflow a bit more efficient. Place the bobbin in the case and thread it as you do with regular thread. Once it's in the case, pull on the thread and take note of the tension. It should not be too loose or too tight as you pull. If you encounter either of these issues, you're going to need to adjust the bobbin tension. There's a screw on the outside of the bobbin case that controls the tension, and by turning it in either direction, you can increase or decrease the tension on the bobbin. If the thread is very loose as you pull it from the case, turn the screw to the right with a quarter turn. If the thread is very tight as you pull it from the case, turn the screw to the left with a quarter turn. In both cases, turn the screw a quarter turn at a time until you achieve the correct tension. 
One thing that's important to note is that the screw post for the bobbin tension is really short and it can fall out easily if you turn it too much. So it's a good idea to work on a tabletop surface so that if your screw falls out, you can find it. The worst thing is losing your screw. The last thing is just make sure that when you're done your sharing, that you return your tension to the original tension because you wanna make sure that when you're sewing with regular thread, it returns back to normal. So it's a good idea to take note of how many quarter turns you turned your screw to adjust your tension. Okay, so now that the bobbin is threaded, it's time to thread the rest of the machine. Using your regular thread, go ahead and thread the machine as you always do. Nothing changes here for shearing. You're gonna be using a straight stitch setting and your stitch length will be set to about four and a half. You might find that you need to reduce or increase your stitch length setting. Reducing it will take up less fabric per stitch and increasing it will take up more fabric per stitch. So technically, if you lengthen your stitch length, you'll achieve a greater shearing effect and decreasing it will reduce the shearing effect. So that's something to keep in mind as sort of a troubleshooting tip as you test your shearing if you need to make any adjustments. Your tension should be set to about four, which is about a regular tension. You can increase or decrease your tension. Increasing your tension will increase the amount of shearing stretch and decreasing your tension will decrease the amount of shearing stretch. So that's another little troubleshooting tip if you need to make any adjustments as you test your shearing and get it set up. Shearing looks best when the stitches are spaced evenly apart. I recommend about a half an inch spacing, and to do this, you can create guidelines on your fabric with chalk, or you can use your presser foot guide, which I mentioned earlier. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit about how to mark your fabric and also how to use the presser foot guide. For marking your fabric, make sure that the fabric is laid on the table right side facing up. I like to align the straight edge of the fabric to the table edge. This helps to make sure that the grain line is straight. From there, use a drafting ruler and a fine chalk marker to draw the lines half an inch apart. Since the drafting ruler is clear, you can see the previous line, which makes marking the lines faster and more accurate. While this part takes a little bit of time, it's well worth it as it helps to produce really beautiful sharing. If you can't bear the thought of marking all of that fabric, then the guide foot is a really great option. So don't forget to check out the blog posts that I've linked in the description on how to adjust your foot to help you in this process. So for this, you're just gonna use the guide and align it to a previous stitch that you've sewn so that you get even stitching throughout the project. Just make sure if you're using this method to go slowly and that you're just paying attention to the alignment of the guide to your stitch. And if you do that, you should have success. I wanna introduce you to two methods that you can use when sewing shearing. I highly recommend that you test these pieces out on a scrap piece of your final fabric before diving into your final project. Testing is really important for you to get used to the handling of the fabric when sewing shearing. It's also really important for you to test the tension and the amount of stretch that you're getting as a result of the machine settings. It allows you to see if your machine is set up properly and to make changes before you start on your final project. Once your test piece is sheared, it should result by about half the width. If you're not getting this result, just make sure to review the machine setup portion of this video and you can do some troubleshooting. I'm beginning with the fabric right side up. For the continuous method, you're gonna be sewing all the rows in one continuous stitch as follows. Begin with a strong back stitch and sew the first line of shearing. When you reach the other side of the piece, stop when the stitch is about 3 8 of an inch from the side edge. At this point, reduce the stitch length to 2.5, lift the presser foot, and pivot to sew along the side edge. Reducing the stitch length prevents the shearing action from taking place and allows you to skip to the next line of shearing. Sew a few stitches along the side edge until you reach a half an inch away from the previous shearing line. Increase your stitch length to your previous setting and continue sewing along the next line of shearing. Repeat this process until all the rows are sewn. 
As you sew your shearing stitches, it's important to hold your fabric flat. You wanna make sure that you're avoiding creating puckers. Once you're done sewing all the rows, backstitch at the end to secure your stitch. The continuous method is ideal when you're shearing pieces that have straight side edges. For the backstitch method, sew a strong backstitch at the beginning and end of the shearing stitch. This will secure the elastic thread at both ends. The backstitch method is ideal when shearing pieces that have curved side edges. If you were to use the continuous method, the stitches sewn along the side edges may distort the curved edge. Just a little tip when you're shearing larger pieces, you'll inevitably run out of bobbin thread when you're in the middle of shearing a row, so don't worry, you're just gonna need to re-thread your bobbin and begin sewing where you left off. So what I would advise is sew a few stitches over top of your existing shearing stitch where the thread ran out and sew a little back stitch in place over top of your stitch and just continue shearing. There'll be so much texture created by the shearing that this won't be very noticeable at all. As a final step for shearing, one thing that you can do to help set the shearing stitches is to steam it with the iron. This is something that I do when the project is done after I've tried the garment on, and if I find that it could use a little bit extra fit, this is something that will help to just tighten the shearing. If I'm satisfied with the fit, I don't worry to steam it because it will reduce the size of the shearing. So it's something you can decide later. So place your fabric on the ironing board, float the iron over top of it without contacting it with your fabric, and just shoot steam over it. All right, so now that you know everything that there is to know about shearing, I hope that this is not only a breeze, but also a pleasure for you to sew. Don't forget to check out the Sophia pattern, which I've linked in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video if you liked it. And if you have any questions or comments, leave it for me below. Happy sewing, bye.